guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is by Lucky Duck Games, and it's called Mutants. In Mutants, you're going to be playing two to four players, take about 40 to 60 minutes, and it's for ages 12 and up. In the game Mutants, you're going to be getting your own player board, as well as your own pre-constructed deck, or your own customizable deck, and you're going to be doing a deck building of sorts. You'll also be doing some tableau management, in which you're going to try and recruit monsters and bring them into your fray, utilizing these charts here. It's going to show you them going in, and then they can go left or right. They'll eventually go to your discard, which will allow you to put them back into your deck. You can choose to also incubate them or even freeze them to gain points at the end of the game. You'll be fighting your opponent's monsters as you're trying to control what is going on in your tableau, all at the same time as trying to score the points uh, by either freezing your monsters or keeping them in your deck and you can score certain points in the game. And if you can have the most points at the end of the game, you're going to be the winner. The last thing to note is there is a board here that represents the different rounds of the game, as well as this power track that you're going to be going up and down on based on how well you're you're doing and you can push your opponents back if you get to the top here and down here is the really nasty deathly zone that you do not want to get to and that is the basic idea of it let's go ahead and take a look at all the components down below we'll come back up and then i'll tell you how to play around so here we have the game mutants and everything included so let's go ahead and talk about it well, the first thing is you're going to notice these player boards this is your player board and there's up to four of them one for every single player in the game and this over here is the scoreboard it's going to keep track of your score which is indicated on these markers here go all the way around the board to 50 and you might go past that these are your player markers. You're going to start based on turn order. And of course, you want to be up here and you don't want to be down here. This area here is going to be your rounds and whether you're going to score points or not. And as you progress through the game, it's going to move this little tracker here to the final round of the game. Over here are some icon cards or player reference cards that you can go ahead and utilize. It'll tell you what your turn does. And of course, uh, what icons represent on all of these cards. Every single player who's playing a game is going to get a set of two of these sets of cards. One, two, three, four, five, and six all the different colors as you notice one will be your hand and one will be your deck and uh, there is of course one deck for every single player in the game these over here are going to be your monster uh, pre-made decks here so you can go ahead and choose if you're just learning how to play to pick one of these here which are basically going to be six sets of two monsters and you're going to take them and you're going to shuffle them and you're going to form three sets of four on top of your player board up here which is going to have them uh, as you gain them they're going to go down this board here and into the discard pile however if you want you can and add all of these additional customized these monsters to customize your own unique deck you'll just be selecting to, uh, six sets of two monsters with this or like I said you could do the pre-made the game is also going to come with the mutants box and it's going to come with a nice handy dandy rule book with beautiful instructions as always from lucky duck games all right let's come up and I'll talk about how you play the game and then we'll go back down I'll show you a little bit of it and we'll tell you about how I think about it so in the game of mutants everybody's going to get a player board they're going to get their main deck of 12 12 cards as well as of course they're going to get their ink or their their monsters that they can breed and put into their deck, uh, you're going to be selecting that as well. But your main actions are going to be pretty simple. The start turn sequence is, of course, you're going to move the monsters down the track, and then you're going to be taking an action. It could be to deploy a mutant, it could be to breed one or incubate. Uh, deploying a mutant is just putting a card from your hand onto the active player space. To breed one, you're going to be discarding two cards to then take a monster from your breeding area that has those the same exact colors, and putting it down into your active player space. And then to incubate, you're going to discard any card uh, to play a mutant from the gene pool into your incubator space, which will basically on the next round allow you to use that card in your hand, which can give you some benefits. Uh, as, after you chose one of those actions, everybody's going to go around in a circle until all people have depleted all the actions they can possibly take. And then after that happens, the next round is going to begin, but not before you score some points. And also there's a potential you can crush your competition, which I'll talk about down below. Monsters have effects when they enter play and when they leave play. And you can also gain points by freezing them, not only by crushing your competition, or by scoring the highest points at the end of every round. Of course, your objective is at the end of the fifth round to have the most points of the game, whether it be by bonus points and or by points you've scored throughout each round. But if you can do that, you're going to win the game Mutants. I'll go ahead and take you down below and show you how the actions work a little bit, and I'll tell you what I think about it. So here we're back to Mutants, the card game. And as you can see, I went ahead and set it up for two players. That way, it's going to be easy to explain. I gave the basic decks to each player, Mosh Pit and Vicious Cycle. It tells you what uh, basically, basically what pairs of Mutants are going to be adding to this pool up here. After that, you're not going to need this anymore. You can go ahead and get rid of it. And then you're going to go ahead and also take away any of the extra player tokens for, of course, I have blue and red over here, and the extra player decks and the extra monster mutants that you're not going to be using for the game. We don't need any of that, so we're just going to be having this. Uh, you have your uh, 12, uh, 12 card deck. You take the six of each of the different colors and put it into your hand. Put the other six over here into your deck area. So each player is going to have the exact same starting hand. And then you're going to take the uh, sets of monsters, shuffle them all up, and then you're going to 
deal out four cards with one face up and three different piles for each player right at the top of this board here, which is basically where they're, they're incubating monsters or they're, they're breeding monsters, I should say, that they're going to come down here. Hopefully, that's what it's going to happen. Up here, you're going to have the first round up here. It's going to show four points if you succeed, and then you're going to have these markers here based on turn order, you're going from first to last, last being in the higher position, and then everybody's going to start off with zero points with these other little markers here. And that's how you set up the game. It's all ready to go now, and you're going to take the first the, the first player, which is going to be purple over here, and which will be this character over here, and he gets to do one of the three actions. You can look at all the different, uh, the turn sequence, how it's going to work, which first says you move a monster either left or you can move it right, and it leaves... Um, if it leaves, it has some triggering effect, but there's nothing there right now, so we're just going to simply do one of the three actions, which is either deploy a mutant, which you simply could play a mutant from your hand and put it in the active mutant area, or you could, of course, go for breeding a mutant, which if you have, let's say you have this guy here, this is a brown and red guy, you simply would discard two of these guys here, and that would allow you to secure this guy here, putting it in your discard pile and uh, that would gain you certain monsters and it tells you, oh sorry, no it wouldn't put you in the discard pile, it would put you here in the active mutant pile here when you discard two monsters in your graveyard. And uh, every time you deploy one of these guys out here, it's going to have a come into play triggered ability and this one says each opponent knocks down their active mutant. Um, so in this case if there was an active mutant over here you would flip it face down. The reason why you want to do that is because as these guys leave play they have a leaving effect. It says discard a card then gain a mutant matching one of its genes to your hand. So that's pretty useful. You can just go one of these cards and gain a mutant. And also, whenever you go ahead and utilize a breed mutant ability, uh, you can go ahead and flip over a new mutant from your stack. You're only going to need this many mutants for the entire game. It's rather quick. Uh, over here is Incubate a Mutant. You can go ahead and discard any card to then take any mutant and put it into your incubator. If you so do that on your next turn, this card will actually go to your hand. So that can be very beneficial, but it's going to cost you basically an action. Um, and that is the three main different abilities you can choose to do in, in the game. And I'll go ahead and let's go ahead and talk about what happens, okay? So first of all, playing mutants. So each of one of these is going to have different uh, come into play abilities. Some of them are gonna have shields, which will protect you from being knocked down. And this one says here, you'll gain plus one of the these little points here which indicates this board up here and knock down this mutant so you can instead flip this guy over to protect you and in which case you would then move yourself up whenever you move on to an opponent you simply put yourself on top uh, and then of course if you move past you would just move yourself past the opponent that's so you're gonna have a people that are up and down which does have some different uh, importance in the game uh, this will give you plus two to those points. This one here says you can discard any two cards to gain a mutant to your hand. Um, and this one says draw a card and then discard a card. So these are all the basic different actions you can take. These guys, of course, are going to have more because you're going to need to uh, get them into your deck and then eventually get them into your hand unless you choose to incubate them. But something like players uh, dominating you will lose two points or each opponent knocks down their active mutant. And of course, the leaving effects. Some interesting things like this one here is going to have a long lasting effect as long as it is in here it's going to say each time you do something specifically you will gain certain points there's a bunch of different monsters that do stuff like that and another thing when we look at this board here if you manage to surpass your opponent and you get to this space here and you were to gain another point instead of gaining a point everybody goes down a point which is pretty cool and at the start of your turn if you happen to be up here and your opponents are all down here you dominate your opponents and the round instantly ends and then you're going to score points the other way this is going to happen is simply after everybody has no more actions that they can play, they're going to then uh, end the round by passing basically, and the score, the points are going to score, this will move here, you're going to shuffle your discard pile, and then you're going to take one card and freeze it, and the rest of them are going to go uh, in, 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 into your deck after you draw, which was then going to give you a new set of cards, just like any other normal deck builder, and then you're going to play for more and more and more points as the game continues. Uh, these spaces I think will remain the same, or they might change, I'm not exactly I think, I think they do change. Um, but anyway, that's here, neither here nor there. This is all the icons in the game you're going to need to know about. And uh, certain times you're going to be able to freeze characters depending on what the intro and outro abilities say. And here's how it works. I'm just going to show you. Like, so if he were to take a turn in his first turn where he wants this guy, he would simply discard these two cards. He put this guy out. It would do this ability. Players dominating you are going to get minus two points. So if, uh, let's say, he was up here and you were here, he would actually get minus two points. So that's what that ability would do. On his next turn, he could simply choose to play a card from his hand, moving this guy down here after, uh, afterwards. This guy would actually move. Then he would play one here. 
here. And then, of course, he has this protection ability. And then on his next turn, if he wanted, he could simply play another one after either moving this guy this way and throwing this guy down. Or if he wants to, he can move this guy here and place another one down. So as you can see, they're going to be moving down this track here, right? And they're all going to have these leaving abilities here. And eventually, they're going to hit down here, unless they get knocked down, in which case they're going to get flipped over. And that's the basic idea of the game, right? You're just going to go through five different rounds of this. You're trying to score as many points up here on the track as possible. You're going to gain bonus points from the freeze area. And you're also trying to manipulate your zones to control points and to control these, like, like this one specifically is really, really powerful, keeping your mutant in this area. It's going to give you the ability to gain bonus points. So it all has to do with customization, deck building, and tableau management. All right, so let's come up and talk about mutants. All right, so a caveat as well. When you're putting down an active mutant on the board, it's going to go to the first blank space. So you're you're never gonna, you're not going to get to put one down and then on your next turn move it here and then put one down and then your next turn put one down and then move that one here. You have to actually move this one over here and then you can start choosing. So just a, a little caveat there so I don't miss up mess the rules up for you guys. I definitely do look at the rules anyway though. This is not a sub this is not a substitution for the rules. Uh, okay, so let's talk about mutants. Well, the first thing to show you is the artwork. And as usual, Lucky Duck Games does a really, really good job at their artwork. It's crazy, it's zany, it's a little gory, and it's basically like you're combining and making mutants. It feels like you're a mad scientist. This is a deck builder, sort of. It's also a tableau management game, like I was saying, and it is kind of a... And take that from a distance, like you're utilizing your tableau to affect your opponent's tableau, and you have to, as a opponent, watch out for what you, you what everybody else is doing to determine how you want to play your board, because they might try and mess you up as you're going throughout the game. It has great customization because there's always those basic decks, which is what we started out playing. It's very easy, and then you get to get into the deck making aspect of the game, but it doesn't take very long. Like usually deck making, making for like Magic: The Gathering, which is a game I used to play a lot, uh, it's a, quite a bit of time. And in fact, you have to go online and like look up the deck list because there's 60 cards and you want the exact perfect ratio. In this one, you're just picking six sets of monsters, but there's a large variety of monsters to choose from. And so you're going to be making your own customizable deck every single time while starting off the same, which makes it pretty fair and balanced. The game feels fair and balanced as you're going throughout it. And a certain monsters uh, or mutants are going to be a little more powerful than other ones, but it, it, it all kind of works out in the end. Uh, I really enjoyed this game. It was fun. It was weird because I haven't played a game that's really like this as far as like moving the monsters down in a certain way and having to like make these. I mean, I, so if we were to do positives and negatives, the negative of the game is probably going to be that it's a little wonky as to I've never seen something like this before. So I had to like relearn how I wanted to make a deck builder. You can't really make. Uh, you can't really mechanic, you mechanize your deck, right? So you draw your 10, you play, you play, you draw, you draw, you draw, and you play your 10. It doesn't work like that because you're only allowed so many actions until you're out. You have your six cards in hand just like anybody else. And if somebody else runs out of actions before you, you get to simply play out your hand uh, following how, whatever actions you want to, which is kind of cool and kind of lame as well because some players are going to be like, oh, I'm not really able to do anything anymore. And it's like, well, yeah, but that's because you played all your cards in pairs and then burned your hand out, giving me the ability to do action after action, thusly screwing you over and moving across this board here, ultimately winning the game. So you have to control that. And it'll take a couple games, I think, for you to get used to how the game plays. On the, on the positive side of the game, obviously, other than the artwork and the quality of the cards and all that, its uniqueness is a quality in its own way as well, because it's something you get to try that's different, that's new, and it still ha harkens back to games that you would enjoy that involve controlling a tableau that influences your opponents, as well as a deck builder that you're pretty accustomed to. I would imagine if you're watching this video, you've probably played quite a few deck builders. It has that option as well. And each round is interesting because it's short and quick and sweet, but as you progress in the game, you're going to get better and better, and so are your opponents, and it has this tactical combat nature to it, even though it's like a deck builder with m management in it. Um, overall, this game's a lot of fun. I really enjoy deck builders, and I like unique deck builders that are either like I like a different cooperative one, or I like the one that was similar to like Magic the Gathering, which is the brass one. This one's really unique as well, and I think uh, as a unique deck builder, it does exactly what it intends to do, which is a good positive for a game. Anyway, it's in the description below, and it'll be on Kickstarter shortly, and it should be something that you should check out and sign see for yourself if you're interested in taking a look at Mutants, uh, the card game by Lucky Duck Games. Thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like this video, go check those other videos on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. It does help, and I do greatly appreciate it, as well as checking out our channel, Unfiltered Gamer, where we have tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. And like I said, don't forget to check out Mutants. It is, it's pretty cool and crazy and definitely unique. It's going to be a certain uh, 
certain subgroup of people who are going to really enjoy this game. Uh, and otherwise, check out everythingboardgames.com, the giveaway geek. Nope. Here, alright, I'm out. Later.